Einen wunderschönen guten Tag, liebe äh, Damen und Herren. Es äh, freut mich, liebe Wrestling-Fans, äh, dass ihr wieder dabei seid. Heute natürlich wieder mit einem weiteren besonderen Gast im Zuge unseres WXW 16 Karat Gold ähm, Specials. Der junge Mann lacht hier schon, weil er wahrscheinlich das ein oder andere versteht. Er kommt ja schließlich aus einem unserer Nachbarländer in Holland beziehungsweise den Niederlanden und ähm, es freut mich, wie gesagt, dass er hier ist. Um, Jörn Simmons. Ja, yeah, thank you very much for having, having me. It was a delightful introduction. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. So it's um, always when I have to talk to um, Dutch friends, um, they're like very amused about it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a thing of like, because, because of working so much in Germany with WXW and everything, I like... I always like to say that I now know like conversational German. I think it's like due to a lack of shows during the pandemic and everything with everything like kind of dwindling down. I think it's definitely gotten worse, but <laughs> I can still understand most parts of it, I would like to say. So it's, um, I guess, um, for having friends um, who speak Dutch, it's almost the same to me, but um, it's, yeah. it's just very small bits. Um, yeah yeah absolutely i think i think uh, there's a lot of like overlap right like there's a lot of sure. similar stuff in both languages so it's kind of easy to pick up on yeah sure but um it's almost yeah it's unused and what i'm old also not used to is um besides all those time uh, seeing you without your iconic hair i guess <laughs> It's been like four or five years. Like it's been like half of my career that I've been without my hair, but you know, people. But, but it was like you, you went straight from one of the brothers of uh, the Game of Thrones Nightwatch to full Tyson Fury <laughs> mode, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I still, people still bring it up sometimes like that because uh, some people want me to grow it back, but I think like they don't understand that the reason like the whole hair versus hair match like came about and the reason that it happened was because I was going really bald <laughs> like my hairline was like back here so I can relate. that's why I always wear caps <laughs> yeah exactly so I kind of like it just kind of happened out of necessity <laughs> you know so that's why like I like you know if I could grow it back I would like to but I physically can't so <laughs> unfortunately it's not gonna happen But it, it it's very fits you so um thank you yeah i was like i was pretty happy with it, like the day after when i saw like myself with a bald head i was like oh, yeah, i th i think it'll work out yeah it's alright, right? <laughs> yeah 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 it's not that bad and i think you'll you'll grow into it so it's um yeah i mean like there's some there's some things that like to this day that i still kind of need to get used to like whenever i like go outside in the winter all of a sudden it's like freezing on top of my head, you know, which is not something I was used to. Like you, like you have like a full head of hair. It's not really <laughs> an issue, but nowadays I'm like, Oh man, like I, I forget about it all the time. Yeah. There are, there are a lot of problems um, that come with it. Um, yeah. But then there's also a bunch of benefits. Like it's way easier in general. Like I never have to style my hair before I go anywhere or whatever, you know, I never have to, you know, especially when I had the long hair, I never have to shampoo or condition it or like put, put it in a ponytail or a bun or whatever. So, you know, it's easier. <laughs> yeah. Right. Those, those two sides. Um, also, um, within WXW, you, became their world champion at a very um, young age. How was it for you? How was it feeling? Yeah, I like, I don't really remember exactly my age, which is maybe kind of bad, but <laughs> I think I was like a year and a half to like two years into, into my run in WXW, you know? So that's like pretty fast. Uh, for me, like, I remember, like, I was nervous for it, you know, because it's like, it was a pretty big deal, especially at the time. But then um, I, th I think for me, it was also kind of a thing of like, I saw it as a challenge, you know, being like, handed that opportunity, I was just like, I'm going to try to make the most out of it. 
make it matter, make it count and try to like, you know, convince people of like my worth basically, you know, which I think worked out because I think later I heard that it was the intention that I would like have the title for like a month or two, which ended up becoming 10 months. So I think I did all right. <laughs> I mean, it couldn't have um, been any better, right? No, no. It's like, like, I was like, I, I felt very honored, like at the, at the end of it, like I was, uh, I was super stoked with like uh, my first WXW title run for sure. And I mean, it's it's been a few years um, since you've been with a WXW, and you, I can almost say you're um, a future WXW legend or a future Hall of Famer. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> but, um, so you you really reached many goals, I guess. There, but um, have you some left? Um. Yeah, it's like, that's the thing, right? Like, I, I reached, like, a lot of goals, like, in especially, like, in WXW, but, like, kind of, like, in, independent wrestling for me, like, pretty quickly. Because um, it was, the old, like, like I said, like, I got, like, that whole run as the WXW Unified World Wrestling Champion uh, pretty quickly on. And then, like I, like, I had a blast doing it. And then, like, I was offered so much that I'm super grateful for. Um. So I like after that, I remember like that's how kind of like the team between me and AJ came about. Right. Because for me, it was kind of a thing of like, okay, like I've been in this main event position for so long. I would like to pivot over to something else, do the whole tag team thing. And then like so other people can go in the main event spot and then like later I'll like come back in or whatever. Right. Uh, but then I don't think like the tag team really. uh went the way I would, would have liked it to go. <laughs> so, um, you know, I would say like, I, I would have loved to have done more in that area, but I, I guess it like, it wasn't really meant to be. Besides that, I think I'm super excited for like uh, future WXW stuff now, because now there's like a whole new bunch of people like to work with. Right. Because that's like kind of the thing, like if you have like the, you know, when I was champion, everything, like I worked with pretty much everybody that was at WXW back then, you know, so you kind of like complete that, like, but new, now maybe it's because of the pandemic, it's because of people getting signed or what have you, but there's like a whole new crop of talent and like, I haven't worked with like 80% of them now. So, <laughs> and that's like, I don't know, that's for me, like, that's the most fun is getting to work with like all different people and try to adjust myself and see like how that works out with me because like I, th I think that's kind of the fun for me in wrestling is seeing uh is seeing or trying to figure out like my variety as a performer so to speak so yeah that <laughs> <laughs> so you've um already kept to it um the, the independent scene um, you've yeah. been in uh, several countries in, in Europe. Which was the, the most exciting or um, yeah, country or league you've competed in? Um, I mean, like, like I, th I think first and foremost, I would have to say, like, I, I would have to say WXW because it's given me the most, you know, like it's given me the biggest platform. It's given you the most amount of shows, like the most amount of experience. Like, so that's got to be number one. But, and it's been the most consistent as well, you know, like most times with independent wrestling and indie shows, like you kind of just like do one show at a time and then like you disappear for forever or whatever, you know? So, um, but there's like a couple, like, I remember like I went to Israel like a couple of years ago, which was insane. Like it, like it was super cool. Like we got treated really well first and foremost. And that was also a thing like we, like most of us, I think thought it was going to be like kind of, you know, like, have like a small time indie show for maybe like a 100 200 people or whatever and then like they had like a thousand plus people there or something like it was crazy and it like they had it broadcast on national tv and we were like oh <laughs> it's actually like a serious thing uh so that one was really fun i remember finland was super fun but that was also because uh they took us around sightseeing and all of that um 
And then, you know, I think like the UK is always fun, but that's because like, I think UK has like a really good fan base. Like people are super excited about wrestling over there. So that's always then super fun to be in front of. And like, I count OTT in Ireland and stuff like along with the UK, it's kind of like the same to me, you know, cause I'm ignorant, but, <laughs> but yeah, I, I guess that like, I had, like I had a few things here and there, like in America, you know, but which, which were fun, but I don't think they were anything special. So. So sorry, this is my dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Don't worry about it. Like I, like I, I stream from time to time and we have two cats and they're like, what, like a couple, was it like a couple of weeks ago or something? Like one of my cats, like jumped onto my keyboard and literally ended my stream. So <laughs> yeah, they're always all looking right. for attention in the, in the right time. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, but man, this, this Israel thing, this, this sounds crazy, right? Like, yeah, uh, <laughs> it's, it's a mentality thing, I guess. Um, yeah. I mean, like, it's, um, I don't know, like, like, cause that, that thing just like kind of came out of nowhere, you know, like, I think like that the guy just messaged me out of nowhere on Facebook. Cause he'd like heard from people, you know, like that kind of thing. And then, you know, like it all like went pretty fast. I, <laughs> I remember Like, because uh, airport security to there and from there is, like, super strict. So I remember, like, I went there and they were like, yeah, where are you staying? I was like, I don't, I don't know. Because usually, like, you just get brought to the hotel and everything. But they don't really tell you where, where it is or whatever. So, <laughs> like, then they had to, like, fact check everything and see if it checked out. So it took me like an extra half hour <laughs> to get onto the plane. <laughs> But yeah, like, like, so I guess it was kind of intense, but it was sweet. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can imagine that. So um, <laughs> I guess they treated you well. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, it was like, like I said, like it was definitely, it was definitely a highlight, honestly, like for my career so far. So nice. But um, go going back to Europe, um, As so yes. Um, in the UK, what would be your goal to to achieve there, or the promotion you'd like to work with? I mean, that's like I I thought about that like a while ago. How um, I think the first promotion I ever like wrestled for for in the UK was Progress, <laughs> which is like one of the bigger ones, right? So like I I kind of lucked out with that. I would like I would like to work for them more. Yeah, I mean I mean like I think Ref Pro. I've done like a couple of shows, but I think like they're, you know, like they they have a really good product going. Besides that, I just think like UK is like it's kind of the same as like with WXW now, where there's like this whole new talent pool and there's like a bunch of new people because of various reasons that I won't get into. But, um, and so I, like I said, I think that's the excitement as, you know, like as a wrestler is like to try and wrestle like all these different people and see like what you can do, you know? So I, like, I think that would be, um, it's not, it's not even specifically like promotion driven. It's more just like, I would like to work with all like these new cool ass wrestlers from the UK now, so. So I guess if you would, if I would um, ask you the same question, but um, going over to the United States, it wouldn't be any different, right? No, no, it wouldn't really be any different. I only think like the only thing that's specifically for the United States, I would just like, I don't even want a contract or anything. I would just like one match on AEW with Eddie Kingston so I could like punch him in the face for like doing the whole thirst trap agenda all over Twitter, like for so long. Like, <laughs> that's like the major, the major thing. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I would love it. I don't know if he would, but you know, I definitely would. <laughs> so Tony Khan, if you hear this, book this match. <laughs> yeah, I just like, I just need one match, man. Like it's all I need. I'll, I'll get out of your hair forever. Like. <laughs> But um, now looking looking again back uh, to Germany, if yeah. you could, um, after you just uh, dropped your dream match with um, Eddie Kingston. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> um, if, if you could pick um, a WXW Hall of Famer or legend 
to to have a fight maybe at the 16 karen gold which is around the corner who would yeah. you pick um you know like like uh like even though like that's not possible anymore now like i would like me and carson was supposed to happen right me and carson beck um i think like like that's like that's the main one because i know like when it was supposed to happen he and i were like both really looking forward to it and you know like i, I we were both like super excited for it and we were like it was supposed to be for like a number of months like the main wxw like product was supposed to be focused on us and everything so i think like uh yeah i do kind of regret that that never happened but of course like that wasn't in mine or his or anybody's hands really so i like i think that's the main one for sure um and when's the time Jorn simmons wins the 16 karat gold well uh not this year because <laughs> Because obviously I'm wrestling for the title and not in the tournament. I was really hoping it was going to be uh, like two years ago, I guess it is now. But like that didn't happen either, obviously. Um, you know, that's the thing, man. Like if I win the title, or I should say when I win the title uh, at 16 karat gold 2022, like, like I plan to like just hold on to it forever. So I don't know if next year is an option. Maybe... <laughs> <laughs> that's a good plan <laughs> yeah maybe like 15 years into the future i do like a little comeback run yeah you know i mean and i'm like I, like i'll come back from like retirement or whatever and i'll win 16 karat gold then with the, <laughs> the old gimmick <laughs> yeah yeah you know i'll grow like the hair that i can grow back like i'll get like a skullet you know like i just get the hair on my <laughs> and then yeah it's uh That's when I'll win 60 karat gold. When I'm super over the hill and nobody wants to see me anymore, that's the time. That's, that's the, the right title. time to do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I retire with the title. They vacate it. Somebody else wins it. But then I show up in the tournament still with the title. <laughs> that's future booking. <laughs> yeah, right? right It's there. genius. <laughs> so... Um... As you've just said, we can't expect you in the carrot gold anytime in the tournament. Um, who's who's your pick for the tournament itself this year? Okay, can you give me a quick refresher as to who's all in it? Because, <laughs> because I see your backdrop, so I could see like a bunch of them. I like I know Bobby Bobby's in it, right? Yeah. Um. So Coach let's see, like, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I like like I'm just going off of your background right now so it's <laughs> i'm assuming those are all the participants i don't really know who i can tell is the in it <laughs> right <laughs> because i don't i don't know if it's always 16 it's so many like how are you gonna <laughs> remember all of them but, but you, you know look but a bit. you have jonathan gresham you have a uh, noir yeah yeah i mean like, like i'm a big like i'm a big like lufisto fan i hope she makes it really far uh <laughs> But I don't want her to win it because, like, I'll win the title and then I have to face her, which is not something I want because I'm scared. I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can win. So I definitely want somebody to cheat so they can beat her. Um, besides that, like, I think I got to go with, like, a homegrown guy. You know, I think I'm, like, I'm my loyalty to WXW is a bit, like, too strong for that. Even though, like, I, like, I do really like Kara, but he already won it. So like he doesn't like he doesn't need it you know so I think I like I would go for Bobby you know he's a uh, he's pick. kind of been flounder yeah he's kind of been floundering since he lost the title he had to like get those series of matches with Michael Knight right which were really good so and you know he ended up winning spoilers uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I think like he's been kind of been floundering he has momentum now and I think like uh, yeah that'd be my pick to win the tournament for sure. Nice. Besides the tournament and, of course, your title match, um, what um, are you most intrigued about this um, 16 karat weekend? Um, I don't know. Like, I, th I think I think like I'll I'll enjoy watching like the showcases. You know what I mean? Like they have like the the other promotions like come in and do like so, some matches and everything. Like I like I always like watching those. Um, 
I'm not a huge ambition fan, but I usually catch myself watching it anyway. I think like it's like a niche thing that like a decent amount of people enjoy. So like, it's like people look forward to it every year, I suppose. And I think besides that, it's just, um, you know, because 16 karat goal is also kind of known for like dream indie matches that kind of happen out of nowhere. Right. I think that's like a main thing to look forward to as well is people that maybe like get eliminated from 16 karat and this and that, like what kind of matches they like get into on the other days. Yeah. You know I mean, like I always, there's always like some big tag matches with a bunch of crazy stuff in it. So <laughs> I always like watching those. Um, coming back to tag matches, um, you've already told us a little bit. So can we see you competing in the, in the tag <laughs> matches <laughs> or in the tag scene again? Um, I think like... Right here? <laughs> tag <team> partner. <laughs> I, would, you know, I would love to have that guy as my tag team partner for sure. You know, but like, I don't know, like, because I would get outshined like every match. I don't know if my ego could take that, but uh, <laughs> no, but like, I, th I think I like, I don't know if um, I think I'm kind of focused on myself, like as a singles competitor nowadays, you know, and trying to like, kind of, I don't know if reinvent is the right word, but trying to kind of find myself as a singles performer again as well. So I don't think like tag teaming is really that in the future for me i'd like maybe like the one-off tag teams with lavaniel you know like we've been, we did a couple of those which have been fun but you know obviously like we face each other for the title so you know i don't know what's going to happen there but um you know I, i like i don't i don't see like a serious tag team run in my nearby future but um When we can't expect that, what what can we expect from you in uh, yeah the nearer future? Well, I think uh, me as WXW Unified World Wrestling Champion, I get another you know sweet ass run with the title. I think. <laughs> <laughs> But this time, this time as like as a good guy instead of you know like I was like a very villainous, angry, evil uh, champion before you know. So I was just trying to. Let's just try to kind of forget about that, you know? And then this time I'll be like the stalwart hero, knight in shining armor kind of guy that everybody wants. <laughs> Making some things up, right? <laughs> For the bad. Yeah, time. sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's all about like, uh, you know, becoming a better person, I guess. <laughs> From bad memories to hopefully good memories, what, what is your um, first memory of wrestling? Oh, man. Um, I think, like, because that's a thing, right? Like, I, I remember, like, just seeing wrestling. Like, I don't remember really anything specific, but any specifics. But uh, I do remember, like, one of the first things, like, that really, like, had an impact on me was rhino goring chris jericho through the smackdown stage i think it was like in 2001 like with the invasion and everything and that's like kind of like when i got into wrestling so i think like that's like my earliest like vivid memory of wrestling so one of these um yeah like cinematic moments yeah <laughs> yeah stick to your mind forever Yeah, I'm not like I'm never really good with um, like it's always just like big key moments that I remember. Like I'm never good with like ooh like this really you know profound match or whatever. It's always just like no, I like Rhino Gore and Chris Jericho or Batista powerbomb and Triple H through the table. You know, <laughs> like all that kind of stuff. So. I guess within your career, you had many of those moments, um, like winning the WXW World Title. Um, For those of um, our viewers out there who don't know much about you or don't know you at all, which three matches spe oh, God. specifically <laughs> would you pick to um, yeah, show them or recommend them to watch? Um, I think like, um, you know, even though it's like not my usual style, I always like my matches with Speedball Mike Bailey, 
but I think like, that's like, once again, like for me, like it challenges me and it's like, uh, it's like, I'm able to like, kind of have like variety as a performer. Uh, so like, he kind of brings that out of me. Like I had like two matches with him. So like, I guess I would recommend those. I think it's like 16 karat gold, 2020 on day three. I want to say and then the other one is like one of the world tag team leagues i don't remember, I don't remember the year i'm very bad with dates i apologize uh besides that i'm uh i was really happy with like my uh string of matches with alexander james after he you know stabbed me in the back and turned on me and all that good stuff and specifically i think it was a uh, street fight or no holes barred however they yeah, no disqualification. I really want to stylize it, but it was like one of those matches in Frankfurt at Back to the Roots in 2019. I want to say that's like one of my favorite matches. Um, and then you know, for like the third one, there was a match of it's another like no DQ match. <laughs> I just like gimmick matches, I guess. But um, it was me against uh, Bad Bones John Klinger at Shortcut to the Top. Once again, I forget the year because I'm bad with this stuff. Um, but I think we had like like this really like fucking kind of uh, 20 minute, you know, war kind of thing. Like, like really went at each other. Um, but I was really proud of that one as well. You know, I think like that match uh, definitely helped like because it was still fairly early on into like my run as WXW champion and I think like that match definitely helped me help elevate me in the eyes of like a bunch of people including myself so <laughs> so I would say those three like me first a speedball uh, me first AJ and me first bad bones that's a good pick or good Thank pick you. so to speak <laughs> and hopefully after I guess Mike Bailey um who just recently um, popped up again on the American Indie scene and um, impressed, I guess, almost everybody. Um, yeah. If you've if you've seen his match at uh, GCW, um, so maybe you two get a rematch there. That'd be cool, you know. Like, like that's also the thing. Like, I've always been pretty outspoken that I'm more of a of a drama and like entertainment guy over like uh, spots. Type of, type of guy right and then like i know like people in interviews have asked me it's like oh yeah i guess you hate like pwg and stuff it's actually like the opposite like i actually love pwg you know but so like that's something like i would love to go there as well you know and like then maybe me and speedball could tear it up over there i think that'd be super sweet but <laughs> you know who knows <laughs> um from the future to the past um your early days so um who, who were the the, the people uh, that inspired you the most so like um in the early days you you were influenced by tommy End. and mm, i let, i would say like i wasn't with him uh not not that much honestly like like how it went for me is like i started training at pro wrestling holland and i mainly got trained by uh tenkwa so like he like he influenced me a bunch as, as to how to wrestle and all that kind of stuff like initially right and then tommy came in like when i was already doing shows and then like he would sometimes help like you know with guys but like i think like i got more interaction with tommy when i started doing wxw <laughs> you know because then i had to drive with him and dante to shows and everything uh but then it was like mainly more just like hanging out and shooting the breeze over other stuff you know <laughs> so uh i think like um so i would say like tanko has definitely like been influential in me i think um you know like for me like a bunch of like the the main guys at wxw when i came in were really influential and like kind of took me under their wing and helped me out and then like it was mainly like andy walter uh junior and mac like mac was super helpful as well like super nice guy uh and i like bad bones just for a little bit as well um yes yeah, so i would say like in the early stages of my career like those were like the most influential people for me and um how can uh, can you compare um or are there 
uh, differences uh, between especially um, the Dutch and the German wrestling scene? Yeah, for sure. I think um, I think D Dutch R Dutch wrestling scene is like way more small time. Yeah, you know I mean, like, but that well, it's the thing of like, because for me, like, from my point of view, the German wrestling scene is main is like is WXW. You know what I mean? Which may sound like kind of like arrogant or whatever, but uh, <laughs> you know, because like I've done other German shows, and then it's like, okay, no, like this is kind of like on the same level as as Dutch wrestling. Honestly, I think Ger like WXW, especially compared. Like not just like the other German promotions, but just like promotions all over Europe sets a very high standard. You know what I mean? Like I think like they take it, they take a lot of stuff a lot more seriously and a lot more professionally than a lot of others do. I and that was the thing. Like I think Dutch wrestling wasn't a good place before the pandemic, right? It was definitely like on the come up, like it was definitely getting better, like more people were showing up and all that. And I think like it had a better digital presence, presence, which is really important in this day and age. But when I, I remember like when I started out, it was like, it really depended, like it was very different show to show with like how many people would show up, how, how much people were into it. And all that. Whereas now it's like more, it was more of a continuous thing. So yeah, I, I, I think like it's mainly just, It's, it's also a thing of like w, WXW has been around how long now? Like, did we have like 20, 20th anniversary and 21st anniversary, <laughs> you know? So like, it's, it's been around for like 20 plus years and you have to remember that like Dutch wrestling has been around for maybe like that long in general. You know what I mean? Like it's super young. So I think like those are the main differences. Like, Uh, Germany like has like it was it was it was eh, I can't talk either <laughs> you're rubbing off on me uh, <laughs> Germany just has more like time under its belt you know like it, it was more experience and like it was more because like they're in Dutch wrestling like I guess like you kind of have a meal and, may, and maybe Tang as like uh, guys who have been around for longer But like Jeremy had like, especially like when I got into WX2, we had like a plethora of these people, like Andy, you know, John, Walter, like they had all been around for a long time already, you know, and that like helps like mold like new people coming in. And that's like kind of like where the Netherlands is or the Dutch wrestling scene is headed right now. You know, like we're getting we're getting people like Emil was like a mainstay in WXW for a long time. He's been wrestling forever and it's like... <laughs> It's probably still the best guy on any card he's on. And then like Tang has been around for a good while now. We have uh, Dante st is still around, you know, like, and then, you know, like I, I kind of pop in and out. I don't know. <laughs> But, and I haven't been going nearly as long as those guys. So, um, But it's getting to the point where like, yeah, like we're starting to get like experienced people that can help a newer generation so that like we have building blocks now, you know, which is something that Germany has that for a long time now. <laughs> yeah, but um, in Germany, it, it evolved, I guess, within the last 10 years pretty quick. So when, when I imagine when, when I started really interesting myself for wrestling in 2005, I guess, and um, Googling up some um, wrestling schools or wrestling promotions, the only few things uh, which would come up was, first of all, WXW. And yeah. um, then Alex Wright with um, NEW, NEW and, right? um, yeah. the right stuff as his um, school. So, um, and um, that there are many others I didn't know either for a very long time. Yeah, that, like, that, was, that was kind of like a shock to me as well. Because like I always, like I was telling people like when I was super young already, like, hey, I'm going to like, I'm going to become a pro wrestler. Like, that's what I want to do, you know? So, and then it was a thing of like, it was on Dutch TV. There was like a show about pro wrestling. And then like the guy that was hosting the show and doing everything took part in pro wrestling. But obviously he took part in pro wrestling, like in the Netherlands, you know? And then it was like, I didn't even watch the show, which <laughs> is kind of bad, but my dad watched it. And then he was like, do you know that there's pro wrestling in the Netherlands? I was like, no, you know? So then I looked it up and then like, 
then I got into contact with Protestant Holland and then like the ball, ball started rolling. But I remember when I was in high school, I looked it up and there was nothing, you know, like, like I remember like professional wrestling, Netherlands, nothing, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. It was literally the same for me. Um, yeah. So which, which was your, your most um, precious, I guess, um, moment within your WXW career besides winning the title? Is there anything specific you have in your mind? Yeah, I mean, like, I, like, I think there's a couple of them. I, you know, like, I don't like to promote the hair versus hair match anymore because of like who the opponent was. But I will say that, like, uh, for me, like a big, like, a big moment that I enjoyed um, was like kind of the aftermath, right? Where it was, um, I was just like, my head was half shaven. And I was all embarrassed and humiliated in front of like, I think it was like 1500 people that day, something like that. Uh, so it was like, it was like a really good crowd. But I think like, I like, I really enjoyed that one. Just like, cause it's like, that's why I said, like it's the whole the drama aspect of wrestling and everything like kind of personifies just me like in the middle of the ring with like a skull and just super depressed. And there's a crowd of like a thousand plus people laughing at me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I really like that one. One that I also that also stands out is like immediately the day after I had a promo with Dragan that I think like went really well, you know, where like it was kind of like an episode of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia where we just kept shouting at each other. But I think like it, it was something. Uh, and then the match following with me and AJ versus Dragan and Emil was like, that was super sweet as well. Like I was really happy with that. Um, and then another moment that like always pops up for me is in my time as the champion, like my initial run, I faced Mac for a title versus title match for a shotgun title, ended in DQ, whatever. But then afterwards, like Alpha Kevin came to challenge me. And this is like, he was like the most over guy at the time. Like it was insane. Like I remember we did a promo se segment when Carson was still the champion and Carson was just like, no, Kevin, you need to go to the back because they'll just keep chanting for you. Like, <laughs> like he called it like uh, when we were there, people just kept chanting for Kevin and Carson was just like, we need people to actually pay attention to the promo. So you need to get out of here. <laughs> but, um, but like the, like he challenged me for the title, like right after that match with Mac. And it was just like a, I don't know, it was like two or three minutes where like he almost beat me. I turn around, I beat him. But I remember like that, like that moment, like he had me almost beat. I kicked out at like, you know, two two point nine, as they say. And then I could hear just people being disappointed, you know, like in the crowd. And I heard people like, like just shout like, come on, like, it's just like from the back and everything. And it, And then I won and like people just booed and flipped me off like crazy. Like, I love that. <laughs> that was a super sweet moment. <laughs> uh, still muted. Um, I yeah. Love, I love to watch those moments, not, not to get thrown, uh, thrown over with stuff, but uh, watching is, <laughs> is exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So like, like, that, like that was definitely, I don't know, like that, that was super sweet to me. So I, like I... I think those are like the three things that like mainly stand out, you know, but like, I've, like I've had so much <laughs> with WXW already. Yeah. So. And I hope um, another one will um, join this illustrious collection um, on um, 16 karat gold weekend. Um, and hopefully they, I hope so too. they won't throw bottles or, or cups or anything at you, but, but gold, literally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hope so too. I hope so too. I think we're on the same page. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, I think this is a good point um, to uh, come to an end. And I thank you for, um, for being our guest and um, sharing. Thank you very much for having me. For me. Um, yeah. You're welcome, you're welcome. Um, <laughs> as, as our guest, um, It is your pleasure to have the last words. Is there something um, you want to talk about? Have you, as, as you said, you, you have a streaming as another proc, oh God, 
project yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so like i'll like i'll just plug my social socials real quick i guess you know like i'm on like twitter instagram and facebook you can find me just like at your simmons it's pretty straightforward i try to have the same handle everywhere right um and then like that goes for twitch as well but like twitch is twitch.tv slash you're in simmons so if everybody could follow me over there like i do stream from time to time i'm planning on doing like wrestling watch alongs sometime soon as well um and i'm pretty close to like a thousand followers so i'm pretty like stoked about that but um yeah like i like i have a bunch of fun over there i've done like really wacky stuff where i like i've hosted dating shows and i've done like other like trivia shows but like you know obviously i play video games and stuff a bunch as well but i try to make it entertaining for everybody and i try to interact with everybody so it's like if you ever want to like reach out and talk to me or whatever that's the way to do it <laughs> like so just to get in the chat for one of my streams um besides that i don't really have anything else to plug you know if you want to follow me everywhere follow me everywhere you know like <laughs> and then uh yeah i, I guess i'll see everybody around <laughs> Yeah, nice. Um, a short question right there. Which which was the, the last game you streamed? I think the last game I streamed was Pokemon Legends of Arceus. Oh, nice, nice. Did you did yeah. you beat the main story? No, no, dude, I'm not even close. Like I'm I like I'm at like the second area All right. or something. I, I think there's like was it like four or five areas in, in total? But yeah. uh yeah, I'm only at the second one. Like my whole goal was to catch a Growlithe and I still haven't caught one of those. So, <laughs> um, yeah, they they are pretty rare, but but they spawn they spawn in the high area, I guess in the in the third or fourth one. But anyways, great game. So, love it. Yeah, I've I I've I've been really enjoying it. I did like I will say like the tutorial was super long. That's like like I don't really like long tutorials, but like when the game opens up, like it's it's been super fun. I think it's like one of the most fun Pokemon experiences. Yeah, right. So um, I hope you have um, a, a lot of fun with with the rest of the story of, of the game, and also um, yeah, with, with your career. I am I'm <laughs> grateful to see what uh, what comes next, and um, maybe we'll have a talk after you won the belt. Yeah, hopefully, <laughs> you know, I, I would love to talk to you again after I win the WXW Unified World Wrestling Championship for sure. So nice. Thanks. Having, um, I wish you are having a good evening and um, yeah. Thank you very much. You too, man. <laughs>